working? I'm not sure. Anyway, let's get right into it. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Ruby Bell Road. I'm Alexandra and today's video I thought I'd just sort of change it up a little bit and do a little talk through of all the things I've made. Uh, there is quite a lot of everything that I have made in my life. Um, really not that much. I don't know. Seeing it all around the bedroom, I would say there's quite a bit. So I've decided that I'm going to split this video up into two lots. So today's vi will be all of the things I made like in high school um, and out of high school when I went to college and university. And then I will do uh, another video which will be all the things that I made pretty much like when I started Ruby Vale Road. So um, I think because there's obviously going to be, there's quite a big step up in terms of my sewing competence competency uh, between those eras or generations. Um, anyway, big words for trying to describe really simple things. I'm not sure what I'm going on about. So if you're interested and curious to see the sort of projects that I made in high school, I thought that would might be a little bit of inspiration to anyone um, who takes undertakes sewing as a subject or home economics as it can also be called. Uh, and hopefully you might find a little bit of inspo in that. And also you can see sort of the projects that I worked on um, and what I loved making to further my love of sewing to end up to where I am today. Alright, thank you so much. If you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to Ruby Bell Road's YouTube channel. And well, let's start with grade 8. I was pretty confident um, on the sewing machine. Let's just say sewing was more my subject than like PE. Let's just say it that way, maybe. So at grade 8, our project was to make a pair of pyjama shorts. This is a very easy project for anyone starting out sewing. If you do want to make your own pyjama shorts and want to see how, I have videos, so I'll put that in the card above or down below in the description box if you want to check that out. These were pretty cool. They had a false fly. Oh, let me show you that. So they had a false fly here at the front, which is a little bit of an extra detail. Uh, inside though, wow, really not finished off properly at all. Um, well, they're okay. I just sort of uh, zigzag stitched it and then top stitched it, so I didn't even like roll over roll under the raw um, the raw stitching or anything like that. We didn't really have a... we, we weren't using overlockers in grade 8 sewing, so uh, it's all frayed edges on the inside, but that's alright. We left a pretty good healthy seam allowance, and these were well-worn shorts, so I think they're doing okay. Um, we were also allowed to use the embroidery machine, so I was really creative, and I just put Alexandra on one leg and Bella on the other leg, so that was that. Uh, and then I went into grade eight, 9 and we could take sewing as an elective subject and we were very fortunate because we could take just sewing. Like we didn't have to do sewing and cooking which was amazing because to cooking I don't... I can cook. Just no. I just don't enjoy it quite as much as I enjoy sewing so that was good. So grade 9 we were to make a sewing bag of course, to take to sewing class. And mine I've made here in a lovely nautical little theme. So really cute and I loved this bag. I got, I think I got an A on this subject, so, I mean, sorry, I got an A on this bag, which was really lovely. And the reason I got an A was because the sewing teacher was very impressed with my perfect hand stitching of the bias binding inside, which was very kindly taught to me by one of my mum's friends, so that was why I could do that. But yeah, it was really loved this bag, um, it was really fun to make, actually. And then, the next project we made, uh, we just dove straight into it again, and we made, like, a dress from a pattern. It doesn't, it didn't not fit me at all, like, um, I had no boobs whatsoever. And it was actually quite a tricky one to jump straight into because these are like all curved pieces here at the front and of course to get like a good mark on it, it wasn't allowed to have um, any sort of pleats or gathers so you really had to ease this in which like at that age, <laughs> at 14, I have no idea how I did this because honestly right now I probably just would not be bothered to even try to attempt this. Uh, and then it just had a very nice little light gather through the front. It's a bit like a baby doll style. Uh, at the back, it was meant to be an invisible zipper. I did my zipper as an invisible zipper, but I'm pretty sure I was using a conventional zip, so that was pretty funny and a bit interesting. And um, this was a little habit of mine, which 
I was really bad at, but I could never get it to meet here. See, it was always on an angle, and it happened for pretty much most of my projects in high school, um, and maybe even beyond high school. I really could never get those to be straight and lined up, and you can see that here. On the waistband, it isn't meeting perfectly uh, there either. But all in all, uh, I was pretty happy with that. I think I got an A- minus on that little dress. The only thing I don't like about that dress is the fabric. I just hate the colour of that beige. It's really and then later on in grade 9, we got a new sewing teacher who was like my favourite teacher ever. She, she really put me on the path of sewing and loving sewing and really uh, believed in my skill, I guess. And she knew that it was something that she could... Uh, she wasn't scared to say, Alexandra, this could be something that you could pursue, which is very nice. And so this was what we made at the second half of grade 9. Um, were these big patchwork pillows, which are really cool. Unfortunately, I wasn't there on the day that they were dyeing all of the fabric and things, so I didn't get to take part in that part of the process. Uh, but yeah, they got all, they cut it all into strips for us, and then we could choose our own colours, and we could choose our style and design of what shape we wanted to make. So we could make like a big, big circle, like a buffet and things like that. Um, but I decided to make like this big fan shape. And then, of course, you always have to add embellishments in sewing in high school so that you can get those higher grades. So my embellishments that I added was this red piping all the way around the edge. And then I also tried to make it like a bit 3D um, and I added these panels in. So I added a panel in through here and on the sides and then just a small one at the top. Um, just so it has that really nice thickness and body to it. Um, I did get an A double plus. Does that even exist? Well, I got one. Uh, I did get an A double plus on this project, which was like crowning glory uh, of my life. It was like a peaked, you know, they say you peak too early. That was my peak, this cushion right here. Uh, but I was really proud of that. And it was something that I did put a lot of time and effort into making this cushion. And I did do it all on my own. So it was really exciting to get that. I did love this cushion because it's so big and thick, it's pretty cool. So that was a good good little make for 14 year old Alexandra. Also in grade nine sewing, we did lots of like little projects, which are really cool. So we did like learning to embroider, um, learning tie dye. Uh, what else did we do? Just like uh, coming up with little creative ways of doing things, how to do pleats and whatnot. Um, so that was really cool. That was to put like a portfolio together. And I really enjoyed, enjoyed that because they're like smaller little samples of projects which then led to our big project. And so then I moved into grade 10 sewing and I still had my same teacher which was really good and we went on a day to going to all the op shops around our local town which was really cool, it was quite the excursion. Yes, so grade 10 we were upcycling our finds from the thrift shop, we called it Make, Do and Mend. Um, by golly, seeing you on YouTube the upcycles and what people do with thrift thrift flips and all that, I'm like, oh my goodness, I was on like such another level in grade um, grade 10. And that was like back in 2011, so I can't be too harsh on myself. But anyway, I did the classic men's shirt to like shirt make a dress. I'm pretty proud of what I did do with it. It's an oversized shirt, so I had unpicked like all of the seams through here. Um, and I took them all in, and I took in the sleeves, and I shortened the sleeve here as well. And I think I even might have redone the shoulder. Let me have a look in here. Yes, I did. I re even redid the shoulder and narrowed the shoulder. And then I did a gathered sleeve here at the end uh, with a little covered button. I made my own covered button and loop. Uh, yes, and so I gathered that in and reattached the cuff. I think it was an oversized men's shirt, so the cuff I could transfer up into my bicep. It still fit. Uh, and then at the front, I just changed all the buttons. I found a packet of... Uh, mix match buttons at the thrift shop which were really cool and so I changed all the buttons there through the front to make them mix match as a little detail. Uh, on the side I also added some belt loops on each side there and I'd also bought like a navy blue tie to put with the shirt so it tied up. Uh, and then my other thing that I did was I added a few little gathers here to the front of the shirt and then I resized the pockets. So I made them considerably smaller and added a little button detail to those. So that was my uh, first grade 10 project that we did, our little thrift flip. So that was really fun. 
Uh, and then the rest of the year of grade 10 was sort of a little bit all over the place. We were really just allowed to do whatever we liked, or I was allowed to do whatever we liked, I'm not sure. I think there were a few projects on the go. We learned how to share that year, which was very exciting. I made um, like a little shared black and white dress, black and white striped dress, which I don't have anymore. Uh, and then I also wanted to learn how to start doing pattern drafting, which was really cool. So I had this really gorgeous dress, so sad I cut it up, but I cut the, like, not cut up, I unpicked it all to draft the pattern, uh, but I wish I had just drafted it, you know, like, by copying it. But didn't know how to do that yet. Anyway, so in grade 10, I went and did my work experience, and I live up in central Queensland, and I went down to Brisbane, big smoke, um, and I did my work experience at a shop called Gardens Fabrics, which was very exciting, and I was there for four days, and it was so much fun, and it was just so nice getting to work around all of the fabrics and learn all of the fabrics, like, that was just so exciting, so mind-blowing, so that was a great opportunity, and from that trip I bought this fabric, which I freaking loved, it's so cool, and so I made this little, sort of, little dress, it's pretty cute, um, it didn't really fit, it was a bit big, which was a real shame, so I eventually, uh, I put a little, a few little gathers here at the neckline, and whatnot, but I probably wish they weren't there. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I just did that, and it had a little matching belt to go with it, a little, um, this is when I learnt how to do the split and spread method, made, um, my teacher taught me how to make really cool little sleeves on that, and then I took the crochet from the dress that I had taken the pattern from, that dress did have rips, it wasn't like a brand new dress, it was an old dress that I was just wearing as a nighty. um, yes, and I took that crochet, trim from the other dress, and put it onto the sleeves here, and for the hem of this dress, it already had, like, that was, like, the finish of the fabric, so I kept that down the bottom. Um, yeah, I do, I did love this dress a lot when I was in high school, and I wore it quite a bit. I think I just sort of grew out of that sort of style, but I still love the colours in it, love the colours. Um, I think it's just more the style of the dress. And then by the end of the year, the teacher let us do a fully self-drafted like start from finish self-drafted pattern and this was really cool because this we learnt from a YouTube tutorial because that was how we first learnt how to make a self-drafted skirt, straight skirt and this was my self-drafted straight skirt and let me tell you even after all of these years it still fits thank goodness and it is still one of my favourite things that I've ever made I just think it fits so beautifully um, like we did the waistband properly with interfacing and everything and then it's got the belt I added belt loops that was my little addition to it um, and it's got an invisible zipper on the side here don't think I did the invisible zipper quite right because it could have should have started up in the waistband but instead I've got like three hook and eyes up in the waistband <laughs> to do it up there uh, the pattern of course doesn't match or anything but yeah I just love this skirt I think it just sits at a beautiful length and um, really brings me in at the waist so it's like Perfect little straight skirt, classic straight skirt. And then we moved into grade 11, and this was a sad time in Alexandra's life. Because I had to take home ec and not just sewing. So I had to do cooking and sewing. Oh, Anyway, that's alright. I'm still still worth it, still great, still happy I did it. Uh, so unfortunately we only got to have to do like one project, sewing project a year. Um, and it was always like revolving around the home for some reason. It had to be very practical, you know, it wasn't allowed to be fashion. I made something really impractical anyways, and I made this cushion cover, which is a fully patchworked Damask um, Union Jack. I had a huge obsession with the royal family, in particular Prince Harry. <laughs> what a letdown. And uh, so yeah, I made a royally London themed uh, cushion cover and this one has a zipper. It's just a conventional zipper. Don't know why I put it at the top of the cushion cover. It should have been at the bottom of it. What a mess. For the details of course you had to put like a lot of effort into all of these. So I've done patchwork and then at the middle I've done like this crown. Oh, let me hold this up. I've done this crown which was all like embroidered here with chain stitch and then we did pearls and little beads over the top of the embroidery uh, and then these beads were meant to look like gems and that's on a piece of red grow grain ribbon. Um, the truth be told, I've never used this unfortunately. It's pretty cool but it's not really... But anyway, that was that. 
And then grade 12, again, we only had one sewing project. So that year was all about leaving home and what we're going to do when we leave home. So I just made a big old laundry bag with patchwork here. This is really cool. I'd seen this on Pinterest. Sorry, my laundry bag has a few stains on it. Um, yeah, I did this patchwork, which is a chevron design. Uh, it's in a beautiful heavy linen and like these were really old linens that my mum had at home, which I got to use. And then in the handles I put like a really good stiffener, like this really stiff sort of wadding, um, just to make them really nice and strong. And it's all fully lined. Uh, I drafted all this myself, like did I own size and measurements and shape and everything and pattern so that was cool and in the bottom did a nice big circle and then in the inside so the bottom sits really well I did the stiffening again um, just nice and covered so that sits there and let me tell you I have got a great deal of use out of this laundry bag uh, I really love it the only thing I don't like is that it does have to hang like it can't just um, sit up by itself which is a bit of a shame it's good because it carries a ridiculous amount of clothes and like it was really good at college because you had to carry your laundry bag from your room down to the laundromat. So they were all of my uh, sewing assignments in high school which were compulsory um, and as you can see some of them we did get to make up on our own and some of them our teachers had already like organized and we were to just follow along and they would teach us as we went which was really good so i am grateful that we had like that little bit of creative freedom but i also love that we did the planned projects because it meant that everyone in the class was working on the same thing so if you needed help you could always you know you rely on everybody which is good because with one teacher and like 15 girls it could get pretty hectic so of course i loved sewing lots so i tried to do as much sewing at home as i could in my school holidays and whatnot. Um, again, I live in a very small town, so it wasn't really much to do, so sewing was kind of my go-to when I was bored. So, I made a few things, and then I went on to making this little dress, which uh, I was bridesmaid when I was 14, and my uh, lovely lady of my, uh, my mum's friends made my bridesmaid's dress, and this was the pattern that it was made out of, so I decided I was gonna make my own dress. I don't know if I actually ever wore this dress, um, but it was a great practice, like a good little way of me making a dress at home for the first time. So it doesn't have any darts or anything like that, and it's just got a gathered skirt, and it's fully lined bodice, and then at the back, this was the first time that I did, like, a proper conventional zipper. Because on that brown dress, I did the zipper, which was a conventional zipper, but I sewed it like an invisible zipper, so, um, luckily mum's lovely friend, another one of mum's friends, taught me how to put a conventional zipper in properly this time, which was good. And then I did a pink zipper, because I thought that was pretty cool, and also we had like this box of zippers, which were all conventional zippers, so most of my things you will see have conventional zippers in them, and I just mix matched all the zippers because we very rarely had anything that actually matched and was actually the proper colour, so that's alright. And then I put a little pink contrasting hem on the bottom, sort of to match the pink zipper. It is a really sweet little dress, I think I need to find someone to give that to because it's probably not going to be one that I will be wearing anytime soon now. Um, another thing I made from a pattern was this really cute little top, it's so dodgily made. But I love the fabric of it, and I love the top. This was from a pyjama pattern. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is, I'm sorry. Um, and so I made this, and it's got like a racer back, very low armhole in here. I don't know why or how I finished this off. But it's all raw. All raw edges. I've nicked them. Sort of. Kind of nicked them uh, in there. But yeah, it's all raw edges. And then you can see here, I did a very bad job. Of going around the curves of the straps but I did do a little covered button which is cute and and a little loop but yeah the the, um, the rounded edges on those straps are not great. It was also made from a pattern there was a free pattern on the bird website I think it was and I made quite a couple um, quite a couple of these style dresses I've got another one to show you which was pretty exciting and this is a beautiful cotton pink and white oh red and white polka dot Loved this dress. It's quite short actually, and it's got a bit of a lower waistline. Uh, the pattern doesn't really fit me, uh, but it was okay. The only thing is, it was always very gapy through the armhole here. So it probably needed to dart or to be eased in and whatnot. Again, I haven't even put a hook and eye on this, but the zipper didn't meet at the top here. Not quite sure what went on there. Well, it's not even a lining, it's just a facing. 
but of course it hasn't been overlocked because I did not own an overlocker back then. And my stitching's all coming out undone. I mustn't have reverse stitched there at the top of the armhole. Whoops. But this dress was really fun to wear and I did love it. And of course I've made it, so always a bonus and always going to be something that I love. My obsession. You want to see where the obsession started? Gathered skirts. I kind of just read on the internet one night and I was just like, hang on a second, I can, I can make that. And I would think, I don't know if it was a tutorial or something, or it was just me finally realizing like, I know how to gather, I know how to put a zipper in, and I know how to do all the rest of it. So of course, if I just take these measurements and double them, and put a zipper in it, it'll be fine. So I made this skirt, and let me tell you, I loved this skirt. I wore it in high school, I wore it at college, into university, it was so great. Um, it's got a yellow conventional zipper, a little bit of contrast there. The only thing is the outer fabric has shrunk and the lining is hanging right out. But, go me, that I did even put a lining in it, even if it doesn't match. But I somehow managed to find a lining, lining and put one in there. Uh, and then I just down a little waistband, nice thin waistband. And back in the day I used to hand sew all of the waistbands on the inside instead of top stitching them in the ditch. So, that was quite time consuming, as well as the hems. I also hand sewed all my hems back in the day too. Um, this one I just folded up because that's the lining. But yeah, the outer was all hand sewn too. But this was a big turning point of my life, learning that I could make a gathered skirt and I didn't need to buy a pattern and it would fit me. Boom! Gathered skirt. Obsession ensued and I will go on to show you how many bloody gathered skirts I have made in my life. <laughs> later on. I decided that I was going to make another little straight skirt from my straight skirt pattern that I had made in grade 9. I'm not sure what happened with this. It doesn't not have the shape or the fit or anything. I think what happened was I went back and made another pattern and I measured my waist at a lower point so it's, it's more like low rise than high rise as the other straight skirt did. Funny story with this one. I only had enough fabric to make the front of the skirt so I decided to put it right at the back call it the baboon skirt. Got a big red bottom at the back. Does have an invisible zipper though, so that was pretty cool. And I can tell you, at this point, I did not have an invisible zipper for it. And I just went for it with a normal foot and still managed to put it in. But again, does not match at the top. And then we had the race day on and I had found an amazing vintage fabric. I Let me show you this. Ready? <gasps> Look at this. It's like, it's a crepe. I don't know, it'd be like a nylon, polyester crepe, something like that. Um, because it's vintage. But I just love this. I found this fabric in an antique shop and I purchased it. And there was actually a lot of this fabric. Um, and I made this little dress. Again, this was like, this is about grade 12. Um, so I took another go at drafting my own pattern. Didn't work out very well. I wanted to do like square armholes. Can you see that? I wanted to do square armholes. I didn't know anything about like sewing, um, what are you, doing stay stitches or anything. So every just, everything just rolls out unfortunately. Uh, and it probably should have had a black lining, not a cream lining. And this neckline, I think I definitely need to fix this neckline on this dress. Um, I wanted it to be like that sort of shape. Is it like a little keyhole sort of thing? And I managed to just not sew on the corners. I think I did that and it ended up like a weird curvy V <laughs> that doesn't sit very well. Uh, and the saddest part with this dress then was the skirt. I've gathered it all to the front and no gathers at the back. So when you wear this it just all like all just falls. Falls right to the front and it looks really weird and at the back there's just nothing there. So uh, unfortunately, I just feel really uncomfortable when I wear this dress now. I haven't worn it in many, many years. Now it's probably since grade 12. But, yeah, I just feel really uncomfortable. But look at this absolute life-changing moment. My zipper actually sort of meets at the top there. And I even put a hook and eye. Wow, went all the way. All the steps ticked. And there's an invisible zipper. Again, I'm not sure. I really don't think I had an invisible zipper in grade 12. But I somehow managed to put that in. So, good job me. Uh, I do love this dress. Well, I love the fabric of this dress and I do feel it is a big shame that I do not wear this dress. So, I think I'm going to put it on my project list to unpick the skirt and regather it uh, and redo the neckline here and maybe see what I can do with the armholes 
even if I just do a dip stitch so that the bloody um, lining doesn't roll out will be a big help I'm sure and then to go with it I also have this really cool little vintage belt with little vintage belt buckle um, which looks very nice with it too. Finally, something I made in grade 12, I was going to a friend's 18th birthday, I think it was, and it's really cool, and got, of course, there's absolutely nothing to wear in my wardrobe, so I decided to make a skirt, and this is a pink silk uh, a friend had given me, which is lovely, and I decided to do a little gathered skirt with a nice wide waistband on this, um, and it sat really tight on my waist, which is cool, but then at the back is just a shambles. Oh my goodness, it's got like this ridiculous floppy bow sitting there because what had happened was <laughs> uh, I used a conventional zipper but I think it was too big for me I think the skirt had ended up too big for me we did this weird um, closure thing at the back here with a press stud and two hook and eyes um, and then it sort of pleated over the zipper which is just a mess and so we put this bow here but it really didn't work. Anyway, I wore this skirt, this skirt quite a lot though and I tell you what, with a tight black top and your hair out, it could look pretty sexy. Could look pretty fun and sexy. Not that that was the purpose why I made it. No. Alright, so that is high school I think pretty much done uh, and then we moved into sewing lots of clothes to take to college and to wear at college and uh, I just felt like I never had enough clothes at college, which was a total lie. I had heaps of clothes, like so many clothes, but I always insisted on making more. So going to college, we needed a ball dress and I didn't want to wear my formal dress because that would have been too, my sister said it was way too good for college balls. <laughs> so I made this purple dress um, and it is again the free Berta style pattern that I found online. Uh, this time I did put another dart here in the armhole so it wasn't so gapy. This is a purple silk that my friend had given me which was lovely. Uh, the only unfortunate part was when I went to college I put on like 5 kilos and so the dress that I had made at the start of the year was far too small. So you can see here at the back that mum's friend got it for me and she put in this extra piece here uh, to sort of give me that space that I needed. And then we did cover buttons all at the back and the mum was very kind and she did all of the finger loops here. Again, this one doesn't really sit on my waist, it sits a bit lower than my waist. And then for the skirt I did knife pleats and did gathers. What a shock. Um, I did try this dress on and it is really, it's still quite lovely. It's not great. Like I know it's not going to look like a shop board or anything like that. Uh, but it is quite lovely and part of me thinks that I should cut the hem, oh, like cut the hem, make it nice and short and probably get a bit more wear out of it because I'm not really in the uh, in the social life of going to balls. So I think I might do that, I might actually cut the hem a little bit shorter and just get a bit of, bit more casual wear out of it. I think it's good because it is, um, it's not too formal of a colour, you know, it's just a lovely easy colour to wear. So I think that would be a good little idea to do. The only thing is doing all those buttons up <laughs> to wear on a normal day might be a bit excessive. <laughs> so I'd need help. Alright, let's go through all of the skirts that I made. So, made this skirt, picked up this fabric, love this fabric, called this the clown print. Little gathers skirt, sits lower though, this one sits a bit, um, it's a bit wider so it sits more like on the hips. Uh, got an invisible zipper there at the back with the hook and eye. Did it meet properly? No, still a little bit higher on one side, but that's okay. Love that skirt, still wear it when, um, if I've got like, and then, you know, yeah, nothing to wear. I'll pull that one out and put it with a black t-shirt. This one is another little one. This is really cool. Uh, gathered skirt, invisible zipper, of course. Hook and I love this little skirt. Funny story on this one. Decided not to cut it as a rectangle and cut it like this, like with hips. <sighs> Ridiculous. Whenever I wore it, I had like these big. Whoosh. <laughs> Why do I keep doing that noise? Uh, I had these big flabby bits at my hips, which looked terrible. Anyway, finally, eventually, I did sort of take it in, but you can see probably a bit more, a bit of that shape. But yeah, it was pretty bad. Then I made this little skirt, this is really cute. Red and white check with a smaller red and white check on the waistband. And then a little detail of red bias binding for the hem, which is really cute. Actually, it's really cool. All hands on around there. And this one's got a little conventional zipper. And no hook and eye. Took it right up to the top of the waistband, that zipper. And decided to make a midi skirt, because these were in fashion. Uh, so again, of course, it's gathered. 
really beautiful fabric, um, hands on hem. Yeah, I loved this skirt, but I feel felt like you always got to wear it with a pair of heels. Um, maybe I've got a really cool pair of sneakers now. I got like the Lacoste sneakers, so I could wear it with that, and maybe more pair it back with like a white t-shirt. It could look pretty cool. This was just a little. This was made out of a remnant that I bought. Um, I think it might have been like five dollars for a remnant, and it's like a really soft black cotton denim, uh, gathered. And a little bit different to change it up this time. I did like a little pleat at the front there. So it was flat at the front and then the gathers. And in a little bit of Alexandra fashion. Face band doesn't meet. And it's got a green contrasting co uh, conventional zipper there at the back. And also contrasting white thread. Hmm. And then I got into a trend of making straight skirts. So we'll have a look at these. So this was a little straight skirt again with my straight skirt pattern that I had drafted. Um, this fabric was really cool. It had a little bit of stretch to it. Love this. Quite like a mini skirt. It's so funny when I made this, my dad said, that's just a house skirt, isn't it? And I was like, oh, I hadn't intended it to be a house skirt. Did wear it to uni um, quite a bit. But I used to fold under the waistband because I made the waistband just way too wide. Way too wide. I think I was trying to make it longer. It's so stupid. Anyway, so I fold that under. And make it wear it just like that. I uh, made this skirt as well. This is gorgeous. This is going one of my going out skirts. Uh, again, the waistband just not cool, not great on the waistbands. So I think again I tried to fold this under. But this one I did instead of doing darts here at the front. Did I do darts at the back? I did darts at the back. At the front I did little, a little pleaty sort of detail. This fabric is so beautiful. This is a vintage fabric given to my mum. And it's lovely. So I do love this skirt, but I'm. Uh, it is a little bit too big nowadays. So I think I'd like to resize this so I can get some more wear out of it because I love that fabric. And then I found this really cool DIY blog, and she shared how to make um, like these panelled skirts. And she had done it out of a stretch green velvet. Um, so I had this stretch blue velvet and decided to make it for a costume because at college our colours were blue. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know why, but I couldn't get the waistband to work, so mum sold the issue for me and we did a drawstring through the waistband. But yeah, it was pretty cool. I wasn't very good at sewing with stretch fabric though, so it's just all zigzagged. I'm not sure if that's how it was meant to be done. And I just used white thread on everything back in the day. I did use that pattern and I then went on to make this lovely blue, like velvet corduroy sort of fabric which again was a really old fabric that my mum had um, and I made the skirt. Again, the waistband, damn, so not cool. So I think I folded that under as well. But yeah, I do love these skirts. So you can see what makes these ones interesting and different. Again, yeah, so these are panelled, so they've got seams through here at the front and then at the back, um, you can see that. See how they are a bit more curved, of course, to fit the bottom. Again, didn't I was the closest match of a zipper that I had. I was always too embarrassed to wear this skirt to work in Brisbane um, because of the zipper at the back, but it is a really lovely skirt. And I'd so, ca just casually, like to mass on Sunday and things like that, I would wear that still. Talking of costumes, we had a costume party at, the, at college and it was anything but clothes. So I got a pillowcase and I was pretty fancy with my pillowcase. I put and put darts in it at the front and at the back. Um, and just cut a neckline and whatnot, and then I did like a little bit of a hand stitch here with a red running stitch detail around there. Sorry, it's probably really stained from the party, but I still kept it. And look at this! Look at how cute this is. I did the red. I did the button with the red stitching, and then I did a little buttonhole, a little hands-on buttonhole. That was my uh, pillowcase to top. And then, of course, my favorite blog, which is. Um, it used to be called A Pair and a Spare, and it's now Collective Gen. She did a little sewing tutorial on how to make an off-the-shoulder top, which just ties around the arms, which is so cute. Uh, so, of course, I insisted on making a top like that. And so you can see it just does like a little knot around the bicep of the arm, and it was really cute and easy. Such an easy DIY. Anyone starting sewing, anyone want to just make something for fun, I definitely recommend this because it's cute. My biggest failed make. No, this isn't my biggest failed make. It's just okay. Maybe it is when you see it. You might think it is. <laughs> I did actually wear this though. It is this little black 
silk Jupion straight skirt, which I tried making. I don't know what happened. I decided that I was going to do pockets though, like this really cool pocket detail, you know, like at the front of the pocket and then it goes to your hair. It's not a very deep pocket, so I didn't think it works, but anyway. Decided to do this little skirt. I had like maybe 30 centimeters of fabric. And I was trying to just do it as best I could. When I made it, it did not fit at all. Like, it was so tight. So, like, around my legs. Like, I didn't, like, shape it or anything. Um, so I added this extra piece in. And I am so impressed. This is why it's not the failed mate. Because I'm very impressed at my, uh, ingenuity. Is that what it's called? <laughs> to figure this out. Because I made, like, I drafted this pattern myself. So it's got a little pocket and whatnot. And then on the side here, I added this panel. And it had to be only a little bit at the top and quite a bit at the bottom. And see, it's got to be curved as well. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I did that on both sides. And I think that was pretty clever. And I could wear the skirt. It did fit. It was just incredibly short. And, um, and then I tried to put a lining in it and that's where I think it went disastrous. Because the lining just all hangs out the bottom. I tried to bag it out but couldn't figure out how to bag it out over the zipper because I did not know how to do that then. So I actually wore it like this, like without that lining bagged out properly and probably all of these threads hanging out. And I just wore it with like a tight black singlet so it looked really bad. But anyway, it has some darts at the back there. And look how, oh my god, this is a mess, even the zipper. How did I let that happen? Anyway, again, it was one of those nights where I was like, I've got nothing to wear, I have to make something. And that's what I came up with. Probably should have worn something that was in the cupboard. Anyway, that's all right. Then I came home one weekend, found this fabric in our local fabric shop, absolutely loved it. I think it was like $10 a meter. Bought some, decided to make a little straight skirt. I love this little straight skirt. I don't know, again, it's just got the perfect fit. I only wear it at home and stuff. It's just got the perfect fit. A uh, little zipper at the back. Funny story, when I put the zipper in, I put it at the wrong, wrong end. I had it coming from the hem um, up to the middle rather than from the waistline down to the hem. Anyway, so that was pretty stupid of me. I made an off the shoulder top, which I love making. These are so easy. This is really cool. This fabric was like a furnishing fabric. It's nice and heavy. My mum had given one of my mum's friends had given it to her. As you can see, a lot of the fabrics have been given to us, which is amazing. So very, very spoiled in that regard. Of this, just with a pair of like tight black pants and stuff. I thought that was really cool. And then we go into the big project of my life, my life changing moment, my pink silk dress. So, to start off with, I was trying to make the pattern. I was trying to cop it, copy it from a gold vintage dress that I owned. Uh, and so I made the pattern and then I decided to make a dress out of that pattern before I cut into the silk. And thank goodness I did that. Because I used this very beautiful red cotton velvet which I had bought. Um, and I made this dress. But it was just way too big. You can see here I've got a safety pin to try and make it a little bit more uh, smaller around the bust but unfortunately it just didn't work out so great. I just did a straight skirt on this um, dress which is cool I like that but yeah you can see the waistline just doesn't meet at the back there and the darts were all in the wrong position see they're just like pointing way up high way up to heaven and then the sad the other sad thing is I used a white lining wish I had a red and used a red lining in this because the lining sort of rolls out and it really looks like Mrs. Claus when it does that. That was my first attempt at my uh, drafted pattern. So it was okay, but unfortunately just not something I've ever worn out in public so much. And so that brings us to my last dress of my university slash college days. And this was, yeah, this is my beautiful pink silk Jupion dress that I made with my own self-drafted pattern, well, drafted from like the vintage dress, but then tweaked, tweaked to my measurements and my desires of what I wanted it to be. Uh, so it's just got shoestring straps, lovely slight curve, you know, scoopy neckline, um, darts, beautiful gathered skirt, and it came just to my ankle because that was how much fabric I had, which is fine because I did love that length. Love this dress because it just fitted so perfectly and putting it on just felt like so like me. So, and then a little gorgeous little belt which my mum made out of the same fabric, little bow, and this one just did up the back, it did up at the back with um, 
hook and eyes. And that went just around the waistline of the dress. So, there we have it. So I hope you really enjoyed this video and seeing all of the things that I made in high school and while I was at uni and college. I would love to hear from you and hear when you started sewing and what projects you first started making and whether or not any of those projects have stayed with you, whether you still wear them or whether you still have that affinity to making the same thing as I do with gathered skirts. So if you'd like to share those with me, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'd love to have a chit chat and see what you think. And again, thank you so much for tuning into Ruby Vale Road and part two of all the things I've made since starting Ruby Vale Road shall be out next week. And I hope you look forward to seeing that too. Thank you so much and best wishes on all your sewing adventures. Bye bye.